Hello, 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 everyone. This is Sharita, Sharita from Say Yes with Sharita. Here at Say Yes, my motto is if you say yes to the Lord, he will say yes to you. Tonight, 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 I am coming to you with day four of patience, all right? Patience. Let's talk about it. The Bible says that the trials of our faith work with patience, okay? So as I was sitting at work um, and I was taking care of some business and um, I kept getting a flutter through my spirit. So before I get into what it is that um, kept going through my spirit, I'm going to um, first usher in the spirit of the Lord. Okay, so Holy Spirit, you are welcomed in this place. 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 Healing, you are welcomed in this place. Healing, you are welcomed in this place. Hallelujah. Deliverance, you are welcomed in this place. Deliverance, you are welcomed in this place. Restoration, you are welcomed in this place. Restoration, you are welcomed in this place. Holy Spirit, you are welcomed in this place. Holy Spirit, you are welcomed in this place. I want to say hallelujah one time for the Father, hallelujah for the Son, and hallelujah for the Holy Spirit. For leading, for guiding, and for keeping, and for blessing us, and for covering us as we navigate through our daily walks, our daily ventures, and our daily journeys through life. So the first thing that I want to talk to you before I get into the word for this evening, the Holy Spirit ministered to me while I was at work and I kept hearing shift in the paradigm, shift in the paradigm. So I said, okay, Lord, shift in the paradigm. So I said, what are we shifting in the paradigm? So the Holy Spirit then um, broadened my uh, mindset in regards to, I said, okay, well, what am I going to do with this? So the first thing that um, I uh, realized is that I'm talking about patience. So with the patience, um, we're going to have patience while we're shifting in this paradigm, okay? Because, see, what happens is as a people... Uh, we need to grow in the word. The Bible says anything that be in Christ is a new creation. Old things are passed away and behold, all things become new. So um, in this season, we've got to begin to shed off, hallelujah, the old man and begin to put on the mind of Christ. Hallelujah. How do I find out what the mind of Christ is? Sometimes we've got to dive into the word. All the times we've got to dive into the word because according to Jesus, he says, man cannot live by bread alone but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. So shifting the paradigm means that we've got to shift and we've got to renew. We have got to basically process information differently, okay? We've got to change our mental, physical, and emotional mindsets in this season. And as we shift our mindsets, the paradigm or basically the things in the atmosphere and in the world around us and in our lives will begin to change, okay? A shift in the paradigm means that there's going to be a change in the mindsets of the people. So faith comes by hearing and hearing comes by the word. And how can people be here without a preacher, okay? And how can they preach unless they be sent? So in this season, I have a lot of stuff that's going on, so I've been prayerful and I've been mindful, and I said, okay, Lord, well, how am I going to deal with this? How am I going to deal with that? And how am I going to deal with the other? So um, I said, okay, Lord, God opened up my eyes, and he allowed me to see people at face value. So he allowed me to see that, okay, this is going on, this is going on, and that's going on, and he allows me now to see the weapons that are formed uh, and are forming against me so I can navigate in peace, in a calmness, because we have got to know one thing about uh, being Christian. Christianity and being Christian is that, number one, the trials of our faith work is patience, mean, meaning that 
things happen in life that are not always good, not always becoming, and not always pleasant. So we also have to know that sometimes the devil is seeking to and fro in and out of the earth, seeking, seeking whom he could devour, just like Job, okay? So when we see things at face value, we've got to do a shift. We've got to change our mindsets. Instead of playing the blame game, I'm going to give you an example. I had a situation, and it was like, oh well this person did this and this person did that and this person did the other these people had done some awful things to me or to and towards me so as i got into prayer the spirit of the lord was like i was nudging you to reposition yourself so that you would not be dealing with the nonsense and the tomfoolery that i was facing and dealing with so i had to shift in my paradigm and I had to shift in my mindset and my way of thinking to the point where it's not them but what could I do differently okay if I stay in a toxic situation for so long then it can have adverse effects on me mentally physically as well as emotionally so in this season sometimes if you are in a toxic relationship sometimes you got to shift your way of thinking and shift your way of praying you can pray for that person but sometimes you got to pray yourself into your own space and into your own place and to that person uh is renewed through their mind because sometimes we can want people to change and a lot of times people don't change unless they desire to change. Sometimes we um, are not happiest with our work environments. In shifting the paradigm, it's not about what the people around us are doing. How am I reacting to this? The Bible tells me to let my light show shine before men that they might see my good works to glorify God which is in heaven. So I've got to say, okay, what can I do? Okay, because I know that the trying of my faith worketh patience. So I've got to go about different situation scenarios in all of the levels of relationship in my life a little bit differently okay so as i navigate through life trials and tribulations differently i've got to know and i've got to get to a point where okay i know what patience is i know that um for a fact that um patience is the capacity to accept or to tolerate delay, trouble, or suffering without getting upset. So I can't get my feathers ruffled because of the things that other people do. But what I need to do is do some self-evaluations and I've got to do some self-assessments and then I've got to maybe even get um, a, a chart where I map, okay, this is what the situation is. And I've got to get some little pointers to say, one, two, three, how do I modify this situation? Okay, how do I train change or transition to this trial that I'm dealing with without um, it being totally uh, tragic okay so I know that patience is forbearance tolerance restraint enduring and having calmness composure understanding kindness perseverance persistence tenacity as well as diligence and staying power determination but I've also have to I also have to have some resolve and some self restraint hallelujah somebody let's talk about self restraint let's talk about self restraint restraint i thank god um for the holy spirit because as the holy spirit will minister to you or lead you guide you he will um protect you from things or protect you sometimes for your from yourself because you have to say lord you know sometimes bridle help me bridle my tongue lord if it's not necessary let me not say it Holy Spirit, come on in and help me contain these things, Lord. Send the angels to give charge over this situation, that situation, and the other situation. Because I know the trials of my faith, the trying of my faith, works patience. So now I've got to not just look at the world around me, but I've got to say, what is it that I've got to do? Hallelujah. I've got to assume accountability for everything going on in my life. How am I going to assume accountability? for the trials the tribulations or things that are going on in my life because I've got to assume the accountability for myself so as 
we shift in the paradigm, we've got to know that it's not about the blame game, okay? It's not about sitting back talking about it. Sometimes you got to get on your face and pray about it, okay? Sometimes you've got to say, okay, Lord, how do I position myself? Hallelujah. And um, how do I realign myself and how do I... I uh, deal with these situations, circumstances, and these challenges in a different capacity, okay? You know, because there's a lot of stuff that is going on in the world today. You know what I'm saying? So we have got to deal with the physical, mental, as well as the emotional um, uh, components of of every situation that we go through in life, whether it's relationship, work, children, um, or just driving down the street as usual. You know what I'm saying? So we've got to make sure that our minds and our hearts are state. And just like I said, we've got to assume accountability for our actions. Sometimes we got to say, you know what? In my spirit, this is what it's saying to me. And so sometimes we got to just say, you know what? I'm going to go with my gut feeling or I'm going to go with my first uh, thought or I'm going to go with this because this told me to say no to this engagement. This told me to say no to that. This to told me to say no to this. Sometimes it's not always good to be everywhere and a part of everything because being a part of everything is not being sanctified, set apart for holy use and for holy purposes. Sometimes you have to say, I can't be a part of this and I can't be a part of that because that's not a reflection of who I am, okay? So what I've learned as well is that in shifting in my mindset or in my paradigm or in my spiritual realm or in my spiritual being, I have got to learn how to sometimes say no. You know what I'm saying? No and without any excuses. Sometimes you just got to say no because maybe you're tired. You know, sometimes you have to say no because maybe God can be protecting you from something by having you to say no. So um, my word for tonight is let patience have her perfect work. Let patience have her perfect work. So that scripture comes from the book of James chapter one. So we're shifting in a paradigm. Okay, so we know that the trials of our faith work its patience. So we've got to be tolerant and have resistance. We've got to have perseverance, stay in power, determination, diligence. And we've got to operate in kindness, compassion, with composure and understanding. And we've got to have some self-restraint, self-control. We've got to have a fruitful spirit. So we also have got to step outside of, you know, what everyone else is doing. And we've got to do self-reflection and self-resolve and self uh work, you know what I'm saying, self-love, some self-compassion, and we've got to reroute and realign some things inside of ourselves. okay? So let uh, faith have, oh, let patience, not faith, but let faith and patience, okay? We're going to switch that up a little bit. We're going to let faith as well as patience have her perfect works, okay? Faith and patience can have its perfect works because without without faith, it is impossible to to please God. Without faith, it is impossible to please God. So in the book of James chapter 1 verses 3 through 8, it says, knowing this, that the trying of your faith worketh patience, but let patience have her perfect works, that ye may be perfect and entire, wanting nothing. So let's go all the way back. God says, seeking ye shall find, asking ye shall receive, knock, and the door shall open. In the Old Testament, it would tell us to delight ourselves also in the Lord, and he would give us the desires of our heart. So God is not a man that he shall lie, nor the son of man that he shall repent. The same thing in the beginning, hallelujah, somebody is the same thing now, okay? He says, wanting nothing. Okay, I'm, I'm not going to be wanting anything in this season because no weapon formed against me shall prosper. No tongue that rises against me that thou shalt not condemn. Exodus 14 and 14 says, I will fight for you and ye shall hold your peace. Um, the battle is not mine, but it is the Lord. So I better get into some praying and some fasting just like Jehoshaphat so that God will raise up a standard. I better stand fast in repentance and obedience to the word of the Lord so that he can uphold me with supernatural as well as natural protection annihilating and destroying all of the enemies that will come up against me in my purpose in my call in my walk with him because it says 
basically that I'm going to be perfect and entire, wanting nothing, wanting nothing. Like the Psalm says, the Lord is my shepherd and I shall not want. I'm not going to want for nothing because I'm positioning my steps in the word of the Lord. Hallelujah. I'm positioning my walk in the word of the Lord. I'm positioning my talk in the word of the Lord. So even though things may manifest itself on the outside of my paradigm and the outside of my spiritual realm and the outside of my spiritual being I know that whatever it is that I'm dealing with I'm going to keep my calmness compassion understanding and I'm going to endure and I'm going to tolerate and I'm going to have some restraint some self-control because God is going to bring some resolve up in this joint this time and he's going to re bring some staying power hallelujah because I've got to operate and determine Ter determination, diligence, and I've got to have persistence, hallelujah, and perseverance, Hold, okay? It's not about them, hallelujah, in this season. It's all about me, hallelujah, because I'm positioning myself under the umbrella of the Holy Spirit. I'm positioning myself under the umbrella of the Word of God. I'm positioning myself, hallelujah, in patience, hallelujah, wanting nothing, hallelujah, because I know that the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof and that God is going to supply all of my needs according to His richness and glory. So I thank God for faith. Hallelujah. I thank God for faith because faith is the substance of things that are hoped for and the evidence of things that are not seen. So I just thank God, hallelujah, in this season that he is basically taking everything and he knows that um, the patience, hallelujah, that patience is having to, its perfect works. Hallelujah. Not no halfway works. It's having its perfect work. It's, God is saying in this season, you let patience have its perfect works and you're going to get a 100% return on whatever you're going to get uh hallelujah god is going to give you double for your trouble hallelujah god is going to open up the floodgates hallelujah and whatever it is that you're doing because of your patience because it's going to have its perfect words because the lord is my shepherd and i shall not want and the word of the lord says that um that you may be perfect and entire wanting nothing wanting nothing so i'm going to start from the beginning of James, and I'm going to read you verses 3 through 8, hallelujah, 3 through 8, because we're letting patience have its perfect works, hallelujah, and God is going to do all things in your life but fail, hallelujah, whatever God says in this word, if you are obedient and repentance, if you are obedient and repentant, God is going to bring it what to pass, hallelujah, so it says in the word of the Lord, knowing this, that the trying of your faith worketh patience, but let patience have her perfect works, that ye may be perfect and entire, wanting nothing. Okay, you're going to be whole in the name of Jesus and not want anything. Hallelujah. Because of your obedience. Hallelujah. Because of your patience. Because of your perseverance. And because of your times of self reflection it says if any of you lack wisdom let him ask of god that giveth to all men liberally and upbraideth not and it shall be given unto him you know back in the old testament solomon was exceedingly and abundantly blessed because he just wanted wisdom Okay, so it says if any of you lack wisdom, just ask God. Hallelujah. If you want a gift from God, just ask him. Don't covet somebody else's gift. Coveting somebody else's gift is a form of covetousness, which is breaking a commandment, which means that if you do receive what it is that you desire, that it is not from God. Okay, because God is not... Uh, that type of person where he takes this from this person and gives it to that person. It says that if you want the gift of prophecy, it says coveted the gift of prophecy, but you've got to covet it from him. Okay, you can't just say, oh, I want her gift. I want it just the way she got it. I want it like just like hers. You know, so whatever conversations you have with God, let it be that he blesses you with whatever it is and not that you covet the things of another person because that's outside of him that's outside of the commandments and jesus says if you love me you will keep my commandments and thou shalt not covet is one of his commandments along with having no other gods and idolatry okay so it says but let him ask in faith not wavering for he that wavereth is like a wave that is driven and tossed by the sea and it says let not any man think that he shall receive anything of the Lord. Okay? It says, For 
uh, for let not that man think that he shall receive anything of the Lord. Because a double-minded man is unstable in all of his ways. So may God have a blessing to the reading of his word for the good and for the edification of his soul. If you want something from God, hallelujah, you got to have patience. The Bible says they that wait on the Lord, he will renew their strength. You'll be able to mount up with wings as eagles. You will be able to walk and not be weary. And you will be able to run and not faint. So in this season, whatever it is that we are desiring of God, we've got to do some self-reflection. Hallelujah. And it says, let no man think that he should receive anything of the Lord if he is wavering in his faith. That's what that means. You can't waver in your faith. Faith is a substance of things that are hoped for and evidence of things that are unseen. Faith without works is there. Without faith, it is impossible to please God. So you've got to set your face like a flint and go before the Lord and pray and say, Lord, these are things that I desire. Show me how to do this. Show me how to do that. And show me how to do the other. Because if you get up and you emulate people, you might not be emulating God. So you've got to go to God and ask him for the blessings. See, if I covet anything, I'd be like, Lord, you know, I'm a woman after your own heart. This is what I desire, and this is what I desire from you. So it's not looking at this person and saying, oh, well, this person has that, and I want that. This person has that, and I want that. No, I'm doing some self-evaluation, and I'm doing some self, uh, uh, self-compassion projects. You know, um, I'm doing some self, uh, help, some self work on my work on myself personally. So in that, if I'm working on me, I got to go to God and say, God, it is me. Oh Lord, that's standing number one in the need of prayer. I got to go to God with my prayer requests, my wants, my needs, and my desire that desires, because it says that let patience have her perfect works. So whatever it is that I desire of the Lord, hallelujah, I've got to sometimes wait, hallelujah. Sometimes I've got to position myself, hallelujah. Sometimes I've got to say, Lord, how do I obtain this thing? Or Lord, is it for me now? Because sometimes a delay is not a denial because God is preparing you and prepping you for whatever it is that you have asked him for, okay? So we're letting Faith has its perfect works. Hallelujah. And we are broadening our mindsets and shifting the paradigm, which means I'm shifting my way of thinking. I'm shifting the way that I navigate. I'm shifting the way that I move. I'm shifting the way that I pray. I'm shifting in the things that I do so that I can get better or different results than I have been getting. And I'm doing these things patiently and I'm doing them diligently. Hallelujah. I'm doing these things consistently. Hallelujah. Because the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. And he wants us to delight ourselves in him so that we can have the desires of our hearts. Hallelujah. So faith, hallelujah, and patience, hallelujah, in this season are going to have its perfect works, okay? Because it says if you ask in faith, hallelujah, God is surely to supply all of your needs according to his richness and glory. But he don't want you wavering like a sea and being tossed and driven. He wants you to be persistent he wants you to be con consistent and he wants you to be faithful and he wants you to be patient as he shifts the paradigm of your mind your body and your soul so we're talking patience this week patience this week we're talking about patience in um ourselves our personal lives in our work in our business in our homes with our hearts desires whether they are uh, spiritual needs or whether they are in the flesh. Hallelujah, somebody. So just in this season, we've got to have patience. Hallelujah. And we've got to let patience have her perfect works. Hallelujah. Because God is shifting the paradigm and he's shifting and changing the mindsets and the hearts of people daily. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And hallelujah. And hallelujah. So as I wind down and close out for the night remember that patience hallelujah is a capacity to, to accept or tolerate a delay obstacles or anything that is going before us in our lives without being upset without being stressed out without being panicky without the panic attack without the stress and the anxiety okay and we've got to be in a season and a mindset of forbearance, tolerance, resistance, and endurance. Hallelujah. We've got to know that we've got to have tenacity, staying power, self-restraint, and we've got to have some resolve, determination, diligence, persistence, as well as perseverance as we navigate in this season of 
patience. So let patience have her perfect works. Let patience have her perfect works. Open up your minds and your hearts to a shift, to a change. Hallelujah. And to let the spirit of the Lord in and to let God into your minds, your hearts, as well as your spirits. Hallelujah. Because uh, weeping may endure for a night, but joy comes in the morning. Hallelujah. Joy comes in the morning. We're going to delight ourselves also in the Lord, and he's going to deli deliver and give us the desires of our hearts. We're going to seek and find, ask and receive, knock, and doors will be open because we're shifting the paradigm, and we are allowing patience, hallelujah, to have its perfect words. Patience to have its perfect works. Okay, so with that being said, um, I'm closing out. I am Sharita from Sharita with Say SAS with Sharita, and um, I am going to try to put some more information and some contact stuff up. But um, I'm just moving as, as the Lord tells me to move. So, um, you know, the Lord said seven days of patience and it's seven days of patience. So may God have a blessing to the reading of the scripture, which was James 1, 3 through 8, letting patience have a perfect works. And I pray that the spirit of the Lord will find you, will keep you, will preserve you. And I pray that the spirit of love and patience and faith and repentance will follow you and be upon you so that if God uh, requires your soul, that he will say, well done, thou good and faithful servant, come on up. And that when the time of rapture comes, that you will be caught up. Hallelujah. That you will be caught up. Hallelujah. And that if you're still here on earth, that you will be a part of the ones that are in Christ that will rise. Hallelujah. Okay. So that none will be left behind. Hallelujah. I pray repentance, especially over your homes and obedience. Okay, we've got to be obedient to the word of the Lord because Jesus says if we love him, we will keep his commandments. So I conclude tonight and remember that um, as say yes, if you say yes to the Lord, he will say yes to you. I am Sharita Perry, Prophetess Sharita from Say Yes with Sharita. Good night and God bless.